So today's question, was there a Big Bang? Well, I guess that depends on what you mean by the phrase Big Bang. If you look in the popular media um, and where the phrase Big Bang is used, it's sort of used to describe some sort of humongous explosion roughly 14 billion years ago that somehow brought the universe into being. Now, as astronomers, as cosmologists, we know that's not really what we mean when we say a Big Bang. Right. What we want is some sort of picture about how the universe works as a whole. And Big Bang just simply means in the past, the universe was hotter and denser. And that's all we mean. Exactly. And it was one of the great successes of the, uh, the, the mathematical aspects of cosmology in the early 20th century. The work done by people like Einstein, of course, and unsung heroes like Alexander Friedman, who could write down equations that describe the dynamics of the overall universe. And what they showed is effectively the universe should either be expanding and cooling, so it was hotter and denser in the past, or the vice versa, it should be contracting and getting hotter. And so it was larger and less dense in the past. Right. The, the funny thing is at about the same time, we're talking the sort of 20s and 30s here, the observers started noting that, that these galaxies that they were discovering are all moving away from us and moving away in such a way that if you were on one of these galaxies, it would look like everything was moving away from you as well. So what they were seeing is a picture of a universe which is expanding, which was more dense in the past and is, is getting bigger. Absolutely. And one of, again, one of the beautiful things is it agrees wonderfully with the equations that were written down by Friedman and those guys back in the early 1920s. It's, it's a, an amazing sort of advance of cosmological science in the 1920s and 30s was both theoretical and observational. And of course, as you know, uh, the equations written down by Friedman and Einstein are exactly the same equations that we use when we learn about cosmology today. Yeah, so they describe a universe which is, the technical terms are, isotropic and homogeneous, which basically means the same everywhere and it looks the same in all directions. Now, those are simplifying assumptions and we've spent the last hundred or so years looking at ways in which you could relax those assumptions, make the universe do some funky things. But to explain the data, those original equations of Friedman are all we've ever needed. Absolutely. And if, again, I think people sometimes get a little bit surprised that we don't constantly rewrite the cosmological equations. The basic mathematics are the same. What changes is what goes into the equations, what they depend upon to describe the dynamics of the universe. What you need to know is what the universe contains. And what our observational evidence has done over the last 100 years has changed our notion of what's in the universe. A long time ago, we used to think that there was really only matter that provided gravity. But of course, at the end of the 1990s, we discovered there was this other factor which dominates the universe. Right. So to work out what's in the universe, we need other sorts of evidence, right? And so one of the great things about the Big Bang, with any scientific theory, you, you, you say, here's how we think the universe is. What would it look like if the universe was like that? And there are these sort of pillars of, of cosmology, observational cosmology. You've mentioned one. We've mentioned one already, which was the universe seems to be expanding. One of the other important ones is there seems to be a relic of the hot early stages of the universe called the cosmic microwave background. More on that later. Mm -hmm. And then we can say, all right, well, things must have been hot enough really early that there would be nuclear reactions. Absolutely. Well, we'll firstly, the cosmic microwave background. One of the, the cool observations, which is very difficult to do, is to be able to measure the temperature of this background radiation. We now know it's only a couple of degrees above absolute zero. It must have been much hotter in the past. And mm -hmm. I said, if we go back far enough, the universe was a raging inferno. But there are some observational tests that we've done that has measured the temperature of the cosmic microwave background as it was a few billion years in the past. And guess what? It was hotter. And mm -hmm. how much hotter? By exactly what we'd expect from our equations. Mm -hmm. The other, which we will talk about in a bit more detail when we talk, do talk about the early stages of the universe, is this fact that the universe was this roaring furnace, temperatures so high that you get nuclear reactions. So the universe was born exceedingly simple, exceedingly hot, made of all those basic bits and pieces, the quarks and the electrons and photons. But as it cooled down, then material could come together and start to forge the elements. And we'll be seeing this in a bit more detail when we talk about the nucleosynthesis of the elements, that the, the early stages of the universe produced hydrogen and helium. And the amounts of hydrogen and helium were roughly 75% hydrogen, 25% helium. And guess what? We look at stars like the sun. 
we find 75% hydrogen, 25% helium, and all those other elements are just in there as pollution, basically. All right, so wrap it up for us. Was there a Big Bang? If by Big Bang you mean, was the universe hotter and denser in the past in line with our cosmological equations? Well, all of our observational evidence says, yes, it was. <laughs>